Hello, everyone. This is for the Infinite Monkeys. This is actually a recording of the presentation of that was given by Lena Ines for the April 2024 chapter meeting, Famous Authors, Daily Schedules and Rituals. Now, we had some difficulties trying to record it at the pre, at the meeting room because it's a new room. We didn't know, understand all of our difficulties we'd be facing. So she sent me her slide presentation. And instead of just posting up the slide presentation, I am going to go through it and kind of also provide some discussion of our comments from the discussion we had during the meeting. So let's go ahead and first off by sharing the screen. Now you should have that one there um, of the meeting. Uh, this is uh, what we had, famous authors, schedules, and rituals. Now what Lena is doing, she's covering four different authors and kind of the things that they are more than four, not the, even these ones. Uh, some of the things that they do on a daily basis to make it work for them. So first of all, about Ina, she has a master's degree in public catering. She has a BS in accounting. She is an Olive Holy Contest Award winner three years in a row. She has two books published in Russia and seven anthologies with the league and different chapters and multiple classes and courses on writing. Now, one of the things that I pointed out that I, during the introduction of all this, Ina started really writing four years ago. And so she has taken this information she is presenting to us and applied it to herself. And you can see it's been very productive within her four years. So she has Ernest Hemingway, J.K. Rawlings, Ray Bradbury, Stephen King, Anton Chekhov. These are the ones that we were talking about. So statistics and comparison, life years, the books they wrote, uh, how many words a day they did and how much time they spend writing. Different ways that you can track your writing and see how successful you're doing compared for your personal success. Ernest Hemingway from 1899 to 61. He was known for to be an early riser and he claimed he never had hangovers and he didn't, he would, and some of the things he was known for saying, saying a lot of things that happened are you know, not true. So like she pointed out, he didn't sharpen 20 pencils. The first draft was always in pencil. And then he would type standing up till noon. And that's one that was within question when we talked about it. He would write letters to friends for a break. So he would keep writing, but just in different things. Now, during his time, he did seven novels, six collections, and two nonfictions. So a very protective time. He wrote The Old Man in the Sea, and by writing in the morning, you make sure that the writing does get done. So you'll, I think we found from a number of these people that there are certain aspects that play along with everybody, but he would write in the morning. He'd take a break of the awful responsibility of writing or the responsibility of awful writing. So he'd take his breaks when he was having struggles and kind of keep moving forward so he could keep writing. Now, J.K. Rowling is still an active writer. She writes in whatever time you have. Her thing was she was a, a working mom on a situation when doing Harry Potter's. And so she really had to kind of just fit it in whenever. So for her, you write whenever. Planning is essential for her. She was a very strong plotter. Rewriting is also just as essential because as she'd work through, she'd find she'd have to go back and change things and rework them. So beware of the plot and pacing. We were talking about we're not sure what that means, but also just know how you want your story to go. Write with your passion. So far, she has produced 26 books and five screenplays. And this is kind of a look of her and her uh, plotting that she would do kind of in a a block format. We had someone else in the classroom that we were discussing who does this and showed his example of what he does. And it was kind of interesting. This is a, I guess, very much more popular with screenplay writing. So then we have her comments was what you write becomes who you are. So make sure you love what you write. And I think that's true for all of us. We are told to write what we know. And one of the things that we know is ourself. And so I think we each put a little bit of ourself into our writing as we go along. Something personal about ourselves, and maybe it's hidden in there, but we were talking about how, yeah, your writing becomes you because it started out as part of you. Now, Ray Bradbury started in 1920, wrote until 2012. Uh, Don't start out writing novels was his thing. Now, it was kind of funny because we have several people in the group that that's exactly where they started out. But he said, read great short stories to get your stuff 
into your head and just keep stuffing your head with more ideas and just keep writing and get rid of the friends who don't support you. If you have people that are negative about your writing, make sure you keep them in a space that they're not going to be pulling you out of your writing, giving you a chance to keep doing what you do. His comments to her live in the library. And that kind of went with stuffing your head with everything that was there. Write with joy. Don't talk about it. Just write. Don't worry about trying to get it out there. 11 novels, 600 short stories, and so much more he did. I mean, the Star Trek franchise is one of the things that was pointed. That was Ray Bradbury. Um, that was his, so much of what he wanted life to be like. So he's very, very productive in his time of what he did. And so like there's the collections, uh, all sorts of story collections. And they were talking about his Zen in the art of writing, essays on creativity and how to be creative. Several people mentioned that these were books or this book, the Zen, is one that they very much believe in and it has helped them. His quote, I don't need an alarm clock. My ideas wake me. Just write every day of your life. For him, it was just get in there and just write. And, you know, 600 short stories and all the other, that is pretty amazing stuff. Stephen King, 1947 and still active. A writing routine. He wakes up, has breakfast, and then a walk. A glass of water and a cup of tea. All papers and manuscripts are already ready. He turns off the TV, puts away his phone, and he listens to music on loop so he has the type of background music he likes. And then he writes from 8.30 to 1.30 every day. And then he spends time with friend and family. So far, 63 novels, 20 novellas, 120 short stories, and still going. It was talked about his writing technique and some of the things that have happened in his life. At one point, he was involved in an accident. He got hit by a car, broke his leg in several spaces, places. And during that time, he couldn't go downstairs to where he had his office set up because of his leg. And he couldn't write. And he became very depressed during that time to the point that his wife was like, nope, we're moving it up. Brought all of his materials upstairs so that he could go in and write during that time. Because writing was such a part of him. It was such a habit of what he created that not being able to do it affected his mental health. And then another some, one of the books that a lot of people talk about is Stephen King on writing. Now, one of the things that's pointed out, this isn't so much about, you know, here's different things about how to write, but it was more of his memoir, how he does it, how he did it, what it has gone through with his life. But there were several people in the class that point out this was a very influential book on how they do their writing. And if you don't have time to read, you don't have time to write. Simple as that. This is going along with the comment, you know, re writers need to be readers. And we had a discussion of how much people were reading. And I'm a strong proponent of that. If you're not reading, how you just can't keep improving your writing. So it was pointed out, really, make the time to be reading and writing. Both of them are very important. Anton Chekhov, Six Principles. This is one that is very close to Ina's heart because Ina grew up where he lived. Six Principles, Absence of Lengthy Verbiage. Total object objectivity, truthful description, extreme brevity. Flee the stereotypes and write with compassion and be compassionate. And this is what she was pointing out is everything he writes is very much, he condensed it down, condensed it down. His writing is so full, but it's very distinct and to the point. And he would work and help other people all the time. Uh, he would go out and do his day job and being with people, but he would spend time helping just anybody with the writing and helping them kind of go beyond that. This is his hometown, where his home where he grew up, like Ina says, her hometown. It has a statue of his, you know, a school, theater, major street named after him. She was saying pretty much everybody in that town has at least one of his books on their shelves, if not the entire collection. And kind of there it is. There's 30 volumes of letters, notes, diary, short stories in place. He just wrote and wrote and wrote. And it's very important. That's one of the things we talked about is it doesn't matter so much what you are writing, but keep writing. For him, his diaries, his notes, writing letters to people, all this was very important. He invented the concept of Chekhov's gun, which is known 
by most people is overshadowing. And if you haven't heard that, that is if you show that there is a gun on the mantelpiece later on, you should be using that. If it's an important aspect of the story that you should use it, don't throw a gun on the mantelpiece in act one and never use it. He was the master of short stories and he believed the shorter, the better. He was a great tutor and teacher helping other writers with their writing by advice, letters, editing, just however he could do it. Help other people become better writers makes you a better writer. And he just continued to write. So how did it work out over their lifespans? Hemingway, Rowling, Bradbury, King, Chekhov, you can see the number of years they lived. Now, this isn't their writing career, just their years. Number of books written. You know, 15, 31, 86, 63, 34. So how did that work out? Words a day. Bradbury was the biggest at 2,800, but Hemingway only wrote 500 words a day. I've actually seen in presentations from some very major authors that, you know, 500 to 1,000 words a day was all they write, you know, and that included editing and doing other things. It's what they did. When did they write? Hemingway in the morning. Rawling, anytime, Bradbury, whenever he had time, King in the morning, Chekhov in the evenings. So it shows that there is no time that is right for a writer unless that time is right for you. And we had a big discussion about that, some of the different time frames of when people write. Because some people have their day jobs and they have to write in the evening. Some would write in the morning before they were still before the influences of the day hit them. Some after work because they would have notes that they would kind of take on and then dive into it then so that they could forget about everything that was happening to during the day. But the whole aspect was to find what works for you. Try different things. Get out there. Try writing in the morning. Try writing in the afternoon. Try giving yourself just short little sprints or longer ones. Find what works for you that you feel comfortable with and go from there. So for finding your return, try different, like we we're saying, try different times. Try different locations. Pretend that you're someone else and use there what they were doing. Uh, there was an interesting exercise she brought up. And I'm going to personally think I'm going to try this. Take a page from a book and then write it as your own version. Take a famous author, something you like, and then say, how would you write it? What would work for you if you were writing that story? So here's how the contact information for Ina. Uh, her Facebook page, her blog, and you can email her if you had more questions. So that's what we have here. So we'll stop sharing. And that's what we had for this presentation. So here it is, and I'll get this out shortly. Thank you for joining us in the Infinite Monkeys, and we thank Ina for all of this wonderful information of how we can move forward with what we do.